Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I mean absolutely over the top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this gorgeous early fall weekend, that would be Saturday morning, where are we? Are we up to October 4th, 20? 21, third or fourth, somewhere in there. So since it is such a beautiful day, I thought we would uh, go share a little hopium, a uh, <laughs> little bit of hopium out there on this beautiful day. So uh, we're going to see how the uh, apocaloptimist and the corporate greenwashers and whatnot are... Uh, talking about how to save the planet or not in the first case here. Uh, um, whoa, it's only October 2nd. I'm losing track. October 2nd, 2021. So this first one that uh, Lieutenant Aaron sent me through, <coughs> I was a little torn whether or not to, uh, to include this one uh, in a hopium rant called our climate projections for the year 2500 show an earth that is alien to humans all right uh of course it uh i guess it begs the question of who you are whether you will consider a, an inhabitable earth uninhabitable for humans earth something to hope for or not. Uh, of course, the problem is uh, that whatever is un whatever planet is uninhabitable for humans is probably also going to be uninhabitable for every other uh, higher life form. So this is this long article from the conversation. You now we always hear that all of these climate projections always stop at 2100 which is probably a pretty good reason for stopping at 2100 because no one's going to be around after then to read the papers anyway but uh, so they just took it on out to for another 400 years and uh and looked at some projections for the uninhabitable alien planet uh the human exclusion zone otherwise known as planet earth uh, all of their forecast and their artist renderings uh, i particularly like this one uh, and aaron did too uh, the one from india showing it's unclear whether this is a human or a space alien uh, <laughs> walking around in what's left of India and the uh, so anyway that's the bottom line so the bottom line the earth of our high-end projection is alien to humans the choice we face is to urgently reduce emissions while continuing to adapt to the warming we cannot escape as a result of emissions up to now or begin to consider life on an earth very different to this one and it is a pretty sweet life on earth today so i don't know i guess we can all just do like this uh, indian uh and put on a space suit I guess an air-conditioned spacesuit, but of course, uh, as much <coughs> as I am cheering on a uh, a human exclusion zone of a planet, there is the little problem that, that uh, of all the other Earthlings we share the planet with going down, uh, going down with us. But I think even Book Hermit might have to agree that by the year 2500 there will you know humans are out of here all right this is just in no particular order i, I love 
when uh, newspapers d just open up letters to their readers. This is a letter to the editor from the Los Angeles Times. <clears throat> a water pipeline from the Mississippi River, you know, to LA doesn't sound so crazy anymore. To the editor, with our continued dire drought and experts fearing even lower reservoir water levels in the key basins of Lake Powell and Lake Mead, maybe, maybe the proposal for a water pipeline system from the Mississippi River to those lakes is not so crazy after all. Such proposals have been made as far back as 1965, about the time California built its grand water distribution system called the California Aqueduct. Yes, uh, that aqueduct has served Southern California beautifully for all these years. Now is a critical time for outside the box thinking to solve our climate induced water shortage. I suggest we start now on a new grand national water distribution system from flooded water regions like the Gulf States to the lifeblood of the Southwest, the Colorado River, which critically serves seven states. All right, let's just start pumping water from the Mississippi River. Let's see, we're going to pump that water right across the Rocky Mountains. We're going to pump that water right across the Sierra Mountains, I think, or no, I guess the Colorado River. We just have to get it across the Rocky Mountains. Okay, I love it when they ask a question. Will lab-grown meat replace traditional farmed meat? Yes. Imagine a day when supermarket aisles stock a large selection of cell-based or plant-based meat while maintaining just a limited section of farmed meat. Yes. Some entrepreneurs dream of such a scenario and are taking bold steps to make this a reality. This is a stem cell biologist by the name of Dr. Sandhya Siraram. Quote, our vision is that you, as a consumer, walk into a supermarket in the coming years and you get to the frozen section to buy your meat and seafood and you see a whole aisle of cell-based protein and another aisle of plant-based protein and probably a very small aisle, a very small shelf of traditionally farmed meat and seafood, close quote. Eventually, Siraram hopes that, quote, it will be plant-based and cell-based all the way so that we can see more animals outside. Yes, I assure you, by the time lab-grown meat uh, replaces traditional farm meat, all of the animals that you used to see outside will have already gone into the stew pot by then. Okay. I love it now. I'm sure I'm not the only one who is uh, getting a laugh. How they just drop the word sustainable. Sustainable. Just, just, but just, a, a, just a catch all uh, adjective. That they can put the word sustainable uh, pretty much behind any noun. You know, it's just like the word natural. Uh, how that, that whole word got co-opted and diluted natural. Now it's the word sustainable. So I love this headline. 
these sustainable robots, these sustainable robots help grow produce using 90% less water and electricity than traditional farms. Yeah, so this is a video about these robots and uh, what they are is, uh, is, well, I can't show you the video because I'm getting sick and tired of copyright violations. But anyway, what, what it is, the, what you see is when you really break this down, what you're looking at is a 10,000 square foot giant greenhouse. Okay, 10,000 square feet, less than one quarter of one acre. Uh, and, and, and the percentage of that 10,000 square feet, it looks to me like maybe 2,000 square feet of the 10,000 square feet are being tended by these robots. Now my garden, uh, my own little vegetable garden out here, uh, is bigger than the entire garden. So what they're doing, what they're doing in this test thing is they're growing basil plants. They're growing about 2,000 square feet of basil uh, using 90% less water than it takes to grow basil outdoors, I guess. Uh, oh yes, we're going to have the sustainable robots scaling up. I want to see these sustainable robots tending a 100,000 acre cornfield. Alright, but uh, guys, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I, I could sit here and, and make an entire rant out of this. This comes from a site, I, I'm not making this up. The name of this website is Undeniably Dairy. Undeniably Dairy. Which uh, obviously it's begging you to deny. I'm sure this is, this has to be a, uh, from the, straight from the PR desk of some sort of, uh, some sort of American Dairy Association or one of those planet eating. So this comes from Undeniably Dairy's sustainability desk. Yes. Why the world is a better place with dairy cows. So this article is going to explain to us how the dairy industry is saving the planet. It is a sus completely sustainable uh, industry, the dairy industry, a sustainable industry. And matter of fact, dairies are good for the planet. Yes. Perspective is a powerful thing. Yes. I often think that about perspective and the role it plays in shaping people's opinions about dairy farming. Yes, people tend to see dairy through a variety of lenses, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, th this thing is a small book. Let's get down to more of the nitty gritty. Uh, so, to put this in perspective, you have to pull back and take a bird's eye view. Yes. All right. From that vantage point, you can see the full picture and grasp dairy, meaning the global dairy industry for what it is, a comprehensive global ecosystem that nourishes people sustains economies and communities and is increasingly good for the planet. Da dairy is increasingly good for the planet. Yes. So, let's ask, 
answer the question, what would our world be like without dairy cows? Yes, U.S. dairy farmers have a proud legacy as responsible stewards of their land and their animals under their care and continually seek out innovative farming practice, practices that enable them to be dairy farmers, an environmental solution. Dairy farmers are a solution to the problems on this planet. However, there are people who question the dairy industry's ability to be good for the planet. Yes, and some even believe that the environment would be better off if we did away with dairy farms and dairy cows altogether. Yes. <laughs> All right. So uh, there. Uh, good God. Uh, so they're talking about how. Uh, you, you know how you can't compare dairy cows to any other. Uh, uh, anyway, guys, th this thing is hilarious. Uh, let's see. Uh, so in one study, dairy cows were replaced with fruit and vegetable production, which led to an increase in greenhouse gas emissions over dairy, yes, and a significant decrease in the availability of essential nutrients. Yes. Uh, long story short, okay. Long story short, the study shows that doing away with dairy cows, god damn it, Sancho, we have a chippy. Lost my dog. Long story short, uh, doing away with dairy cows would not benefit the environment, and in some instances, it would actually, and in some, what? I'm assuming this is a typo. All right. Doing away with dairy cows would, oh, I'd say doing away with dairy cows would not benefit the environment and in some cases would actually increase greenhouse gas emissions, you know, by switching dairies to fruit orchards and reinforces the nutrient supply by the dairy cows, not easily replaced by other food groups. Uh, la, 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 la. Okay, the very bottom line. Dairy is a vital and resilient ecosystem that encompasses many facets and perspectives. Yes. Some dairy cows may be black and white, but the dairy industry is not. Dairy's impact is vast and deep. Yes, and he emphasizes again, it is good for the planet. Taking dairy out of the equation removes the benefits that come with it. Yes. So who is J. Waldwogel? J. Waldwogel is Senior Vice President of Strategy and International Development at Dairy Farms of America. Yes. So if you enjoyed that article from the sustainability desk of Undeniably Dairy, would you come back here, little dog? Come here. How about <clears throat> will removing dairy cows help stop climate change? No, they, you know, they would say no, removing dairy cows will make climate change worse. How about sustainable farming 
is a long time commitment of U.S. dairy farmers. Sancho, would you come back here, please? Well, come on. He goes, nope, I'm going to stand right here. All right. Let's see. How about two more? And again, this is a video from CBS News videos. Sancho, would you come here, please? Little dog. Ah, Sancho, would you come here, please? Sancho, damn him. Would you get back here, you crazy dog? You settle down. All right. Eco friendly construction material known as mass timber gains traction. Architects and engineers are turning to an environmentally friendly material known as mass timber to construct buildings. Yes, the eco friendly mass timber which is made of planks of wood glued together and stacked perpendicularly emits less carbon than using steel, iron, and cement. Yes, I'm sure it does. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I don't have time to get into that, but uh, we're just going to close. I want to thank... Uh, alert uh, listener Michael from Austin, Texas. Uh, he sent me this story. This is a newsletter from, uh, it is a food bank in Austin, Texas. Uh, here is the entire story. We are going to close out our Hopium Roundup with this story. I'm going to read this word for word coming out of a food bank in Austin, Texas. <clears throat> Cynthia is a new mother to one-year-old Elena. She's noticed her daughter singing along to songs on the TV and imagines maybe Elena will be a singer when she grows up. But for now, Cynthia just hopes her daughter will finish high school. Cynthia wants to go back to school herself to become a nurse one day. She was working at the hospital as a certified nurse assistant, but recently became pregnant with her second child. Let's see, so this woman, it does not tell how old she is. She has not finished high school she had a job, but she became pregnant. I, lo I love that term, how women become pregnant. But recently, the non-high school graduate became pregnant with her second child. And so she could no longer keep up with the hospital's long hours and overwhelming number of patients. Now, Cynthia works at a fast food restaurant and she is feeling a bit nervous about what the future holds. Yes, so, uh, you know, interviewing this woman uh, at a food bank with her two kids. Quote, it's just that with two kids, you know, it's going to be hard. There's a lot of stuff I don't know how to do, like cook. There's a lot of stuff I don't know how to do, like cook, or if she gets sick, I panic, close quote. But hope to the rescue. Cynthia discovered Southeast Health and Wellness Center, a partner pantry, a partner food pantry of the Central Texas Food Banks while coming in for a prenatal checkup. There, she discovered that, in addition to providing health food, healthy food for clients, there are also classes that teach the importance of a nutritious diet. Yes, 
they even double as cooking classes. Now, with a source of fresh, nutritious foods from the food bank, yes, and knowledge about how to cook them, Cynthia is looking forward to a brighter future. Quote, it's so nice of y'all. Cynthia Beams, thank you for providing food for us and for doing something kind for the world. Close quote. You help neighbors like Cynthia form healthy habits for life. Can we count on you to continue making nutritious food accessible for the families hit hardest by the pandemic by making another gift today. Yes, and Michael puts a PS parentheses, which pandemic? Corona panic or the clueless morons breeding like rabbits pandemic? In that case, no, you cannot count on me for help. Anyway, uh, we want to thank the Austin, Texas Food Bank for uh, feeding all of the uh, assumedly unwed uh, single mothers with no high school education. Uh, let's keep feeding, let's keep feeding those uh, single mothers and their little darlings so they can all look forward to a brighter future to be a singer. My guess is uh, one-year-old Elena will be singing the blues. Uh, we need more blues singers in Austin, Texas. But anyway, I gotta wrap up uh, this rant because it is truly a spectacularly gorgeous fall day out there. Would you look at how gorgeous it is? out here at Bugs in a Jar Farm and I uh, got to get out there and uh, what am I doing today? I'm up there digging holes in the ground getting ready for we're going to build two more tiny houses here at Bugs in a Jar Farm so the Airbnb will be off and running. Come see us at Bugs in a Jar while you still can. Bye, guys.